Welcome to Horror Movies with TNA. Each episode, we're going to pick a film, talk about it, and rate it. Word of warning, there will be spoilers. This week, we're talking about... 1983, Sleepaway Camp. Why, why is his name in the film? Frank Flick. He's a beefcake. I'm just going to adjust my levels. Beep, boop, beep. Let's have a... TNA. A, a bit of TNA chat... Any films you've watched recently? Anything I'm trying to think of any interest? horror films I've Anything watched. that's excited you? Did I watch you watched Studio 666, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did watch Studio what? 666. Yeah, and? It's not very good. Okay. It's worth watching for the bit where uh, they're having sex and get chainsawed in half. Oh, okay. It's more of a comedy horror with gore. Okay. All right. Um, I watched two. I've got two to talk about. One's a recommendation, one's Dog not. Shit. Film... Knock at the Cabin, Shyamalan. Shyamalan and the Ding Dong. Yes. I read it was in Back to His Back to His Best. Uh, no. So there you go. That was that. And then the programme I've watched, which I thought was good, was Poker Face. Where's Columbo? Yeah, Poker Face. Recommended. Anyway, anything else? That's it. <laughs> Let's start the film. 1983. Sleepaway Camp. A.K.A. Nightmare Vacation, directed by Robert Hitzig. Yeah, he only did this and Nightmare... Other variants of Sleepaway Vacation 2, a lot long, a lot later. Yeah. But he didn't call it Sleepaway Camp 2, though, did he? I don't know whether he didn't own the rights he, or something. He I don't know. returned to the franchise later and on. And then he did something else that was not quite the same a lot, lot later. I like the theatrical poster as well. I was looking at that today. The one with the knife through the trainer. Yes. But all I would say with this film straight away is he has a certain way of directing his actors to look off into the distance and say what they're thinking. And it keeps the camera on them probably half a minute longer than he probably should. Right, let's go through the cast very briefly. Felisa Rose, who plays Angela. Isn't Felisa Rose... Daughter, not daughter. Something to do with Bruce Springsteen. I looked and she has been... Obviously, Sleepaway Camp was her most famous role, but her resume, her filmography, is quite extensive. She pretty much stuck with the horror genre. This was her starting point and it continued lots and lots. Oh, was she? She's probably the least hammy out of everyone in this. Well, a, a role, she kind of plays almost a mute throughout. So we've got... Jonathan Tiersten as Ricky Thomas. Bruce Springsteen's sister, is it? So, Felisa Rose, who plays Angela, is Bruce Springsteen's sister. Okay, so that's not totally true, it just says here, yeah? Pamela Springsteen was born a girl and she hasn't killed several teenagers in summer camp in real life, but she most definitely has been a pair of 80s camp slash films. We've got Judy, who's the kind of villain of the piece, well, along with Meg, but Judy is played by Karen Fields. Christopher Collette as Paul. We've got Mike Kellen as the camp owner, Mel Costick. He was in Just Before Dawn, amongst lots of other films. He was a bit of a singer as well. He did some country music. Ricky. Jonathan, Jonathan. Tierston as oh. Ricky Thomas. Meg, the counsellor, played by Catherine Calm, was in Silent Madness. <laughs> Desiree Gould as Aunt Martha. Uh, yeah, we'll get oh, to her later geez. on. She's quite eccentric. We've got Ronnie Angelo, played by Paul D'Angelo. He's a beefcake. And that's it, I think, for the cast. I don't think there's anybody else. Where about Pamela Springsteen? I don't know. I've got Pamela. I don't know where the fuck you've got Pamela Springsteen. Tell me what part Bruce Springsteen's sister played in the film. Okay, oh, no, you've got. I'm going to get me. I don't make the rules. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, she, well, no, she was in the second. Third no, so the only one she wasn't in is the film we're fucking talking about now, you gonk. No, I'm gone. <laughs> and special mention goes out to Alan Breton, who plays the cop, Frank Flick. No, pa- no Pamela Springsteen in there. No, okay. no Pamela Springsteen in no. this one. I, allegedly, she's the sister of uh, pop sensation. Bruce. Pop sensation. <laughs> pop. <laughs> pop sensation, Brucey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in fond memory of mom a doer i like the message at the beginning of the film nice little 
message. So anyway, we're on the water down by the lake. Actually, it starts off with some very overly dramatic music as it pans across the camp. Camp Arawak. There's absolutely nothing happening. <laughs> absolutely nothing. But the music's very, very dramatic. It's a summer's day. John Baker and his boyfriend, Lenny, and John's kids are on a boating trip. And they go for a dip in the water and are hit by a motorboat. Well, yeah, there's some person water skiing, isn't Some kids. They? Yes. And the overacting of the lady skier, water skier. Well, she, she's absolutely shitting herself. <laughs> she doesn't want to be there, does she? Like, yeah. She's upset. The lifeguard stupidly allows his girlfriend to take controls of the motorboat and it careers and then unfortunately they step on the accelerator as a result john and peter are killed and we're well, not meant to know it's well no yeah no. but well we, you know you that it. all become that all said, unfolds if you said spoilers Ultimately, I've said John and Peter because we're led to believe that John and Peter are killed because Angela then is the survivor, isn't she? It's a bloke and a kid. Did you see Lenny, his boyfriend's face, the camera? Again, this is what I'm saying. The camera stayed on Lenny's face. Not There was no emotion at all. He was just kind of staring and it went and showed his face for a bit. And he just said, John, exclamation mark. And that was it. Yep. One of the life jackets bobs up. It's got all a bit kind of jelly of, on it. Yeah. I, a little bit of jelly on yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's all kind of churned up and... I like that, it bobs well, up. Well, it's what it means one of the kids has got fucked up. Well, not dead. Yeah. Tragically killed. Oh, sorry. What a bit, What did you say about the arm? Arm? Oh, I thought you just said arm. Anyway, the one thing I forgot to mention is that was a flashback. You don't know that initially, but that's a flashback. And we are then cast eight years into the future, to the present day 1983 or something i don't know traumatized angela is now living so this is one of the the children from the boating accident is now living with uh, their aunt dr martha thomas she's uh, when i read up on uh, wikipedia they said she was eccentric i don't know if the role was played out that way i don't know what the director to how they told i don't to know i mean that. but she, I, I thought oh god this is some of the weirdest acting i've ever seen i mean again she's meant to be a doctor in this film she's meant to be a doctor i think the director said just be eccentric and that's how she interpreted eccentric generally she keeps looking off to camera and saying oh do i think that it's incredibly weirdly staged so she's now raised angela that's she's played by desiree gould i'd be interested to know what she's like in any other film really i think she only did about two or three more films more so maybe. but yeah angela is mute well we we learn that she's partially mute because she does choose to talk to people when she feels more comfortable with them later in the film but at the moment she says nothing she can't yeah good stares. halfway through she, she she's stares. done all right really she's like terminate she don't have to say fuck all well yeah and we get the feeling that she's traumatized from the accident from eight Woodbury. years previously angela and her cousin ricky have gone off to summer camp Summer camp, yeah, not. Everyone arrives at summer camp. Summer camp, some aren't. That's a... <laughs> That's a... <laughs> they all pile in. So this is the first time we meet the camp owner, Mel, and Ronnie, acting A1, I wrote here. Is Ron, they... Ronnie's a m- muscle-bound... Ronnie's the beefcake, and his acting is... I really liked him in the film. He He's not drugs. the worst actor. No, not by a long shot. But when you do watch him in isolation with his reactions to the scenes, you do realise how awful he is. But actually, he's still not the worst in yeah, the no. film. There are bits of this film that are so good they're bad, and there are other bits that are bad and so bad they're bad, and there's other I bits mean, that are good. Yeah, so, I've heard of... We've all heard of Sleepaway Camp and probably the twist at the end, but what I didn't realise was... In comparison to a lot of slashes, how camp it is, sleepaway camp it is, how yeah. camp it is in terms of how it's directed, and also the kills on it are done in a way that's different to any other. Yeah, well, well, well slasher film I've seen. Really. Yeah, actually, the kill count's quite high in this film, mainly. Be- yeah, we'll get to it. So we've been introduced to the camp owner and one of the counsellors, which is Ronnie. Then we get introduced to the cooking staff. Pedo Arty and Ben, who seems to play the role, I don't know if I'm being offensive by this, like he's playing scenes from Roots or something. He's like a kind of 
a, a black guy. Yeah, or like Benson a, or something. It's yeah, not, it's, it's not comfortable. very troubling. I mean, but, the, old, the old films are incredibly, the most 80s you could do. Everyone's got very high wasted shorts. Do you see that guy's crop top? Oh, there, there's crop tops oh, everywhere. Fantastic crop tops. And also in the canteen, remember the fly paper you used to get? I think oh, you yeah. still get it. Yeah. There's a lot, I mean, a nice touch. Realistic, it probably because it was an actual canteen. But in the canteen with all the kids, and that's the other thing. A lot of these are actual kids. So we've got the cooking staff, Artie and Ben. Artie's a pedo. He says things like, "There ain't nothing, no such thing as being too young," and they both have a laugh about that. And then there's a long shot of him alusting gratuitously over the, all the young campers yeah. arriving. So yeah, not, not great. get away with that. No, I don't. Ricky and Angela arrive and they meet up with their friend Paul who kind of plays a part in the film. So I did start to understand why these films generally use 35-year-olds to play teenagers. And then that theory was completely ripped up because most of the adults in the film are probably worse than the children yeah. <laughs> acting. Well, I thought you were going to say is it's a bit more comfortable when the people are in like the late to mid-20s. Oh, yeah, this is... Because they talk about sex a bit. Oh, yeah, no, really? this is mm. using genuine teenagers to play the role of teenagers. Teenagers. So it is a bit different in that respect. Yeah. I'm not a prude at all, but it's just that when they start talking about boobies and sex and all that lot, you just go, ooh. I... When it's a 20 year 20- year old you just go fair enough i mean there's one kill that we'll cover later that's yeah. it's wrong i read three different places when they explain the plot that scene was explained in exactly the same way so we'll get to it mm. anyway so we've been kind of introduced to a lot of the key characters let's move on We meet Judy, who's the villain of the piece, along with Meg, who's one of the counsellors. But generally, it's Judy, who's Ricky's ex, who's Angela's cousin. Angela is sharing a cabin with Judy, actually. She's been put in with her. And also, along with one of the camp counsellors, Meg, who should know better, they start bullying Angela, mainly because she spends a lot of the film just staring at them and not responding to any of them trying to... And doesn't talk. Uh, Yeah, she stares gormlessly at everyone, which actually, as we've already said, is absolutely fine because she's meant to be traumatised. They say, you know, they constantly make remarks about her. At dinner, Angela's immediately not eating. So Ronnie, Ace, takes Angela into the kitchens, straight into the arms of pedo Artie. They go into the walk-in, so Ronnie leaves them on their own and the arty takes Angela into the back room where he starts undoing his trousers. Yes, but luckily... He instantly gets up, pedoed yeah. up. Yeah, Ricky turns up and goes, what are you doing? Cousin Ricky catches them and the kids run out. This leads nicely into murder number one. Later with Artie in the kitchen with a stupidly tall pan of boiling water. I don't know why the pan has to be so tall that you have to get on a chair to see it. I've got a pan. When I've been doing some of my brews, I've got a massive pan. Nobody's got a pan that's so tall you have to get on a chair to see over the top of it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's a little extreme. Well, either that or get a lower oven, you know what I mean? A smaller oven. Uh, A lower oven. So you need a low oven with a high pot. I would suggest a higher oven, a normal human-sized hob with a shorter pot. But then you get as much shit in your pot. You've got to get as many corn on the cobs as you can. Mm. Yeah, once you need to stand on a chair to see over the top, you, your pot's too tall. Hands on his buttocks. Did, what, oh, did they push him or did they just pull the chair? Well, they push him at first. And he goes, oh, yeah. And he's acting in this is very good, actually. He goes, oh, my God, what are you doing? Yeah. What the fuck? So our killer, obviously we don't know who the killer is, pulls a chair away from him and all the boiling water pours all over him. And we experience... I was hoping he was going to fall into it with his legs, little you know, legs flipping on. So you thought he was going to go completely yeah. in with his legs sticking up? Yeah. Mm. No, so the pot spills all over him and we see him lying on the kitchen floor for a long period of time. Again, the camera dwell, dwells on his screeching face. I know, I know I've just put here. Uh, <laughs> massive pot, acting, etc. for about, <laughs> it must be about a minute. The, the effects, bubbly skin. Fine, fine. And he, he's doing, arg, 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 and then they wheel him off and he's still going, oh. But, oh, he continues to screech. Yeah. Ben finds Artie fucked, melted, shrieking, shrieking. After Artie's wheeled away, the doc is asked by Mel, the camp owner, what's the prognosis, doc? And he says, well, he's badly burned all over, <laughs> especially his face. You see, that's a doctor you need, isn't it? Gives it to you straight. The effects of the burn are good, but it's 
after the fact. You don't see the act of you, murder. You, yeah, every single... And I will say you don't see it in any murder at all. Even the shower one. But it's the, a weird way to do it because it doesn't pay off. I still thought the corpses were still quite yeah, gruesome. Yeah, but, but you, there's not you much need to see them killed. getting killed. Yeah. Friday the 13th, right, you see them getting yeah. killed. Oh, well, actually, you Sick do see, you see an arrow at one point, don't you? But it, not great. I think none of the kills are very satisfactory, are they? No. Mel wants to keep it hush-hush because he'll think it's bad press for the camp. So that basically allows the killer to go about their business for at least another hour or so. I haven't mentioned much about all the different pranks and hijinks that the campers get up to because I kind of... I almost felt like fast-forwarding them through all that. It's absolutely fine. It, It... Keeps the film going, but I didn't write anything. The teenagers are playing pranks on each other, and it seems like there's one guy who's the butt of the joke. Literally, in this case. Yes, because he ends up bobbing his head in somebody's... One of the lads pulls his pants down, and then he puts his face into it. He sits up and dobbers his head in. It's all that kind of stuff, to just get his... But the the best bit was the coach crop top in the background again, so, you know, it's (laughs) it's not bad. One of the counsellors wearing a crop top. Well, they both oh, so Mel, to appease the cooking staff, all the other guys, the main mm. chef gets promoted and he says, I wasn't thinking much about myself, Mr. Costick, but I think his acting was slightly racist and he should have been ashamed of himself. Softball game. How high was the camp counsellor's crop top? It was almost like a headband. And I noticed, actually, all of the kids had their white socks pulled up. That's what I kids think, do nowadays, I, I isn't know. it? Anyway, at one point during the baseball game, someone says, eat shit and die. And I think Ricky says, in a very clever retort, eat shit and live. Uh, Eat shit and live, Bill. (laughs) All right, then. I didn't realise we were going to have to watch the whole fucking oh, game. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, uh, uh, apologies, if there's anything interesting happened here, I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is interesting. One of the guy, the guy that saws the butt of everybody's jokes, makes a catch, even while he's playing a calculator boxing game. Now, I looked on eBay, and you can buy this game. It's the BG15 boxing calculator. Fuck's sake. £150, you can buy them. A scene on Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, they haven't put a scene on Sleepaway Camp. They just put Rare. They've missed a trick. Yeah, I bet they're a pretty penny. That evening at the dance... Oh, dear God. Older boys, they dare each other to talk to Angela because she's sitting off to one side. One of them says to him in a new yoik, I can't Oh, they've got all it. Well, anyway, right at the beginning, the kids in the flashback have got really thick New York accents. Yeah, I think it was was filmed in New York. Yeah, I think it says in the end titles. One of them says to her, now I'm going to try a New York accent, so get ready for this, because I've written it phonetically. All right. What's the matter? Can't you talk? I don't, what? (laughs) The kids fight. Oh, yeah, there's like a massive pile on. I've done a drawing of a cloud of smoke with lots of arms. Yeah, it, well, it was kind of like... Generally it was a pile on, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Angela's being picked on. So, again, Ricky... And, and, again, this is why the camp owner suspects Ricky is the killer, because Ricky jumps in to protect Angela every time. Yeah. And, again, he starts this fight. He jumps on these older boys. One Actually, one shouts you in whose army as well, which I hadn't heard yeah. for quite a few years. Acting is subpar, uh, but at least the dance does allow Paul, Ricky's friend, to get to know Angela a bit. And he even gets a few words out of her, yeah, which she, is the first time. As he's walking off, she goes, yes. Here he <laughs> Well, she says, I, I can't remember what she said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, older boys are out skinny dipping at night. And Kenny, one of the boys who mocked Angela earlier and fought with Ricky, is out on a boat with a girl. Murder 2. The kill is very dull. Again, as you said We before, don't even see it. No, it, the, so the boat capsizes. Boat capsizes. Under the boat. And he's like there making... He's talking to himself and then someone appears in front of him and then they just push Kenny's head down. And then you don't see anything till the next day. Yes. Really weak kill. The corpse... Is absolutely fine though when it gets discovered the following day. Yeah, good. It's kind of shit coming out of its mouth and all it, sorts. Well, it's got a snake, a little snake coming out of its mouth. Looks fine, quite good. Oh right, yeah. So listen, 
This is the first time we get to meet the cop. So we have to make special mention to the cop, who is Frank LeFlick. And we'll come back to the moustache later, because you've got to mention the moustache, because it's kind of famous in this film. But anyway, he shows up. His acting is fucking insane as well. Some of the statements he makes. Ronnie says to the cop... I remember that. I remember that boy being a pretty good swimmer. And then the cop says, "I hope you're wrong." Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, in other words, well, okay, kind of, in a way, it kind of makes sense. Goes, "I hope you're wrong." So this isn't a murder. He, I yeah. just put what because Mel is shitting it as well. He's yeah. really panicking, isn't he? Because he thinks the camp's going to get closed down. Because that's murder. Too. She wrote already. That's murder. She wrote. Meg, the camp counsellor, who's kind of this horrible one that's in, in cahoots with Judy, accuses Angela of being a goddamn prima donna. It's difficult, isn't it? Meg <laughs> shakes Angela and Judy stirs the shit. Judy also mocks Angela. She, she, and actually, at this point, she says, I've not heard her, she's a carpenter's dream, flat as a board and she needs a screw. Mm. What the fuck? I don't, I don't remember that shit. Ricky keeps defending them. From Angie from the bullies in a variety of scenes. So I'm kind of skipping over stuff, but it's general. They keep bullying Angela because she's kind of still mute, still not reacting to anything. And Ricky keeps stepping in, which actually heightens Mel's suspicion that it could be Ricky. Well, yeah, there's loads of that bloody um, red herring kind of bollocks. Very heavy handed, but anyway, murder free. No. Billy. Oh. Who's one of Angela's tormentors? He gets it next. Oh, he bad. goes for what he calls. He grabs a magazine and he says, "I'm going for a wicked dump." <laughs> now I didn't know whether that was a crafty wank, but what's a wicked dump? But um, very boring murder. Billy gets trapped in a toilet cubicle with a beehive that the murder. Yeah, he pokes a beehive with. through this thing, and it doesn't look like a beehive. But but the issue I've got is you can see he's having a dump. And the uh, bit under the door where he's gap, trapped, the gap beneath, is fucking massive. It's like two foot. So when he goes, under. "Oh, help me out!" Yeah, he could have just crawled under it and got well, out. Well, I mean, having I... said that, the again, you don't see him get stung. Yeah, so I said. But the after effect is really good. Again, the corpse is gruesome, but the kill is very forgettable. Yeah, but the... he does have a bee beard. He's got a bee beard. What a wicked. So Mel, the camp owner, is even more sure. That yeah, the killer I, I put B face. Ricky. Paul and Angela are fooling around. Angela is uncomfortable uh, because Paul is kind of being a bit forward. He tries to go to the next base and Angela is uncomfortable. She then has a flashback to watching her father in bed with his boyfriend, Lenny, and then... Can you explain to me what the significance of the rotating bed with the boy... Pointing. Pointing closer to the girl. I, I didn't know whether it was... I, I, I didn't get it. So they saw, kind of sniggering, which is wrong, their two dads making out in the bed. And then they went to bed and the boy points to the girl or the girl points to the... What is the boy points to the girl? Was that right? I, I think it's the boy pointing to the girl. Yeah. As if to say, you know, we're both boys as well. I don't fucking know. It's bullshit. What do you want from me? I mean, they would still be giggling even if they were stood there watching their yeah, mum and true. dad yeah, in yeah, bed, yeah, I true. suppose. But I mean, I don't didn't do really, that. I think I'm, I, I, I don't know. I mean, having said head. that, it wasn't a bad shot. It's probably one of the better shots yeah. in the entire fucking film. Um, but yeah. But yeah, the flash, it didn't mean a lot. I mean, it was unnecessary, but he had to pad the film out because it's only like 80 minutes long anyway, <laughs> isn't it? So. Everybody's playing catch the flag. Paul and Angie fall out. And who's there to console Paul? Judy. Don't judge Judy, though. Don't judge Judy, though. Now, hang on, let me do it again. I mean... What? Angela finds out... Well, yeah, she, but she, she captures them snogging. She comes upon Paul with Judy, mm. and she's upset, understandably. <laughs> and then, um, the, we're down by the water, actually, and yeah. everybody's there. Mel starts to attack Ricky, and Councillor Meg and Judy throw Angela into the bay. And I think it's this point where, out of focus, we can see Ronnie... 
pumping iron yeah. in the we, background. Well, in the background, we can see... We're transfixed by D'Angelo. Only for pumping. a few seconds, but it is It's a obvious. sight to be a whole. I don't know what's going on. I, I really don't. I mean, he is a fine figure of yeah. a man. Huh, right, so as Ricky runs away from Mel, he goes to help Angela out of the water because she's obviously been thrown in. A few kids are throwing a bit of sand at Angela's legs. We'll get back to them later. I don't know if you noticed that. I didn't. I no. actually read something online about it because apparently these are the kids later on that get murdered. So when when they go camping, you know what right. So we're, we're led to believe because they were throwing a bit of sand at Angela... They all get hacked to death with an axe, but we'll get to that. But I thought that was a bit extreme. <laughs> do, do you recall? <laughs> Murder four. Councillor Meg has been on Angela's case from the beginning in cahoots with Judy. Meg goes and takes a shower. The killer goes in. And so this is where she gets stabbed in the shower. Yeah, she gets stabbed in the back through this waffle thing. Some, some card. Yeah. Some card. Good. Because she was getting on my tits with whatever song she's humming constantly. Oh, yeah, she's, she, she seemed uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, she's... Mental. Yes. And then she has to simulate having a knife cut down her spine. We see it from the other side as a knife is dragged down almost like a bit of card with a bit of blood yeah, spitting it's weird that out. Even then, when he could have showed something, he decided, no, nah, I'll just show it. But, but again, that's quite... Quite brutal. Oh no, I was gonna say, yeah it, yeah, it is. Compare it to pieces where someone gets chopped in the shower with a chainsaw. Oh no, in a cubicle actually. Yes, in the changing rooms. Isn't it, it goes through a door, but fuck me, you see it afterwards, <laughs> don't you? It goes through the fucking lot. Yes. Murder five, six, and seven. Eddie, one of the camp counsellors, is camping with the sand kickers from earlier. He leaves some of them because some of the kids decide they don't want to camp anymore and he leaves three of them. And then we have this scene where they get butchered with an axe. It focuses in on an axe and then Eddie finds them later on and there's just sleeping bags. Fucking I have must been... have been on the phone then. I literally didn't... <laughs> I, I don't remember that bit at It's all. a bit uncalled for because essentially these kids haven't really done a great deal. I mean, you know, I just, I've li- literally missed that. We also have owner Mel... Councillor Meg has arranged to have dinner with him and he goes in search of her and he finds her body in the shower. And then his he acting... finds his acting chops. <laughs> he finds him. He says, oh my God, that's too mad. Oh my God, that's too mad. Mel's rant is almost perfect. Mike Kellen, kudos. <laughs> I think I've seen him in other films not as weirdly as appalling acting as he does in this. So I think it's the director here in terms of saying, look off the camera, instead of thinking it, say it. Just don't say anything. Try and fucking act instead of saying what you're thinking. I mean, it's an actor's workshop of... um, I mean, it's it's a workshop and there's an actor in it, but he's doing metal work. (laughs) It's not good, but it's great. That one bit, I think, gave it an extra star from me. An extra star? Are we yeah. doing stars? Well, I'm going oh, to... okay. Now Judy. Judy's going to get it. So this is murder number eight. <laughs> right, this one's troubling. Judy with the curling irons. So let's go through this. So yeah. Let's okay. look at this scene. So Judy's curling her hair. We've got a silhouette in the doorway. I thought this was quite interesting. Judy's saying, who's there? Who is that? And it's obviously the actor playing Ricky... But I think it's meant to be a bit ambiguous, a bit androgynous, because yeah, yeah, it's can't. hair behind it. Yeah, you can't but quite see. But it's kind of clearly him. So you expect her comeuppance to be the worst in the film, because she's kind of been the, the worst person who's been bullying. And it kind of is. Yeah. I mean, I assumed it kind of is. Essentially, from what I read, it is words were used like violated, so definitely... Um, yeah, I know. Okay. Um, by hot curling irons. So thankfully... But you don't see where the curling irons go at yeah, all. It leaves it open to interpretation. And obviously everybody's interpreted it the same way. I put what the fuck. Bit unsavoury. I just thought that was weird. Yeah, it's out of place. When it went with the pillow on her face and the curling tongs, I thought, it's not going to do that. Because all the previous murders I, have I not been it, as yeah dodgy and suspect as that. But... Mel Camponer, I also Mel the Camponer, beats Ricky, still convinced he's the killer. 
The mistake he makes, though, is then he wanders into an archery range and gets an arrow well, in his neck. You've got to rewind a bit. Mel, thinking Rick is murdered, grabs him and you think, oh, that's it. And then you think, oh, he punches him once and you go, oh, fair enough. Then you don't see it, but just keeps pounding the ground <laughs> where an overacting going, oh, yeah. You believe Ricky is, yeah. Beats yeah. Him to and him. he beats oh. him to, and you think, well, you've killed the kid. And which is, you I think that's, well, that's probably the most disturbing out of the lot because it's an old bloke. Got a kid on the ground, knocking his fucking face through. Give the kid a break. Well, he nearly did, his break, face. Break his fucking head off. Ronnie Angelo, or Paul D'Angelo, is amazing. That's all I'm going to say. Police arrive. Oh, yeah, so then Mel walks out after doing that and get and goes... Yeah, so he gets an arrow in his neck. He says, "You, it can't be you. Or Police arrive. Right, so now the cop from earlier, moustache cop... Frank LaFlick turns up with his moustache, with his moustache in tow. It, uh, it's clearly false, but it's I mean, amazing. Yeah, you don't really, I didn't really notice it until they did a close-up. <laughs> Not just of his moustache, but of his face. It looked, and it's just, it's almost drawn on. It looks. It's very flat. And sometimes it looks like it might have shifted, like it might be dropping on the verge of, he's constantly putting it back on, but it looks. It, it's not even as good as a fake moustache. I don't think drawing, you could get. I don't think Groucho Mott drawing it on your top lip would have looked more realistic than that one, mm-hmm. to be honest. Paul has agreed to meet Angela down by the water. Oh, by the way, all the bodies in the... So there's mass panic in the camp now because all the bodies in the sleeping bags that you didn't even fucking see no, um, have, have been discovered. And we go back to the moustache and we get to see it fully... It's really something. And then Paul has gone down by the water to meet Angela. And I think it's because Angela's kind of wanted him down there and Paul obviously thinks that he's going to get a bit of action or something. I don't know. Well, and also she says, let's get both get naked or something like that. Well, she does say off. something at some point saying, yeah, take your clothes off. And Paul gets all excited yeah. and giddy and all that kind of thing. So, so I, I suppose this is all building up now. We've got the end scene and we've got Ronnie, good old Ronnie, and Susie, one of the other counsellors. They hear something down by the water and they go down there. They find Angela is stroking Paul's head. And, and also she's doing the same kind of humming that the yes, other fucker was doing yeah, in the she's, shower. That's what they hear, don't they? They hear mm-hmm. Angela stroking Paul's head, kind of almost singing like a humming a childlike um, song. Yeah. So then when they come upon Angela stroking Paul's head, we go back eight years to when Angela was taken in by Aunt Martha and Martha in her what's the word again? Martha in her what's the word? Uh, the muffins. We get Aunt Martha who's a bit eccentric oh, right. talking about how she always wanted okay. she always wanted a little girl. This was totally unnecessary that well, fucking bit. It was, and I don't know... Because you kind of ruined the fucking ending. You should have yeah, just I done it. I don't... Did, did you understand whether that's a... I didn't understand whether it was a good thing or... A, I didn't get it. It turns out that she'd forced Peter to... To be a girl. And we realise it's Angela that had died in the boating accident and Peter had survived, but then Peter had been raised as a girl. For the shock ending, you kind of already gave it away by that, which I never knew they kind of... Literally preceded it with a flashback. Yeah, it explains it to explain. It kind of, yeah, then, yeah, then shows it, which still is a shock. Yeah, but at least it then but goes straight from yeah, it does, yeah, that true. to that. So kind of get it. But um, it would be better just to go straight back and then maybe do the flashback afterwards. Oh, well, no, actually, well, yeah, maybe no, not. Because I love the way Actually, just ended. don't do the fucking flashback. <laughs> yeah. Paul's severed head rolls as Angela jumps up, well, Peter, and the rest is history. I, I really loved the ending. <laughs> I, I, it was kind of out of place with the rest of the film because it. I, I know all about it and I've seen all the different. Um, I've never watched. Are you going to explain it. what the fucking ending is? Uh, so yeah, okay. she stands. Well, she Angela stands up, but she's Peter, and she got blood all down her. Uh, but it pan. Well, it doesn't pan down. It just zooms out, and she's, she's got Peter, male she's, genitals. Yeah. Cock and balls there. But her face is this kind of yeah. very... And she's like screaming. That, I think that's the best bit. And that's a yes. bit it keeps cutting back to her face and then her cock and balls. But it's like, 
you know, she's like looking off to the left for some reason or right. Yeah, it's really with weird. With a big weird But well, I really bobber. loved it. But I think that's because they modelled her face doing that and just yes. attached it to a, yeah. a, a man, I'm hoping, not a lad. Yeah. Uh, to stand there with his bits out. Yeah, um, but that kind of, in a way, makes it better because it's just weird. Yeah, because it, it doesn't... The whole thing is Nothing weird. gets said, it's just no. her. Well, Ron, Ronnie says something uh, like, Both it's a little boy. He's yeah. a She's a boy. Or something. Um, I, I really liked it. I loved everything about the ending and I liked the fact that it didn't do anything other than it went green, kind of went green... And then the music was yes. really good until the sing. The go- well, I actually have to say, I don't know what you're saying because you know I've been bopping to it as I texted um, the other night. So, what some of the lyrics are? Angie, you're the love of my life. I know it's all a masquerade. It's just what I've been looking for. It's really great. I really liked it. Film ends at that point. It just it doesn't explain anything else. No, it no, it's just fine. fucking stops. It's cut to fuck corner. I'll do a quick BBFC thing. There was 53 seconds Ooh, let's see. cut from it. Apparently, the... I never knew it came out around the. I never remember seeing it in video shops, actually. No, I don't. In Canada, apparently, you can get the, the true uncut one. Canada always seems to have a lot of the it's uncut not the, ones. It's not the one we watched then. Again, I can't promise okay. that the version on YouTube that we watched, the HD one, good quality, is the uncut one or not. I can neither confirm or deny. Another, uh, generally, there's more shots of Meg with her back slit open. Mm when she falls out of the shower and there's minor shots of Angie at the end and then a few other bits but that was generally it but then I mean there's 53 seconds which is quite a lot but in terms of the kills I don't think there was much to cut out because nothing really happened don't, yeah kills. it's all after the fact isn't yeah. it like I say that, that's a disappointing bit you, it's you very know. disappointing well no it's not it's not it's done in a different way which is okay but the point is with this type of film that this is obviously copying Friday the 13th the purpose is there's a the build up to them getting killed then you see them getting killed and reacting to getting killed and then and that's, somebody and discovers then you must, them yeah and killed. then you see them dead afterwards good money to see a bee bird a bee bird a bee <laughs> a bee sometimes with the Teenagers, I thought it felt like who's the guy that did Bugs and Malone? It was almost like Alan Parker. Alan Parker had done Friday the Thirteenth with children. (laughs) (laughs) These weren't too bad, though. I mean, no, they were. So, if not for some so bad they're good elements and the end. I think this would have been a stinker. I thought it was really odd. I don't know if I'm probably on my own with that. Having said that, the ending is, I thought, really, really good, although it's very well known and everybody's talked about it. And so is the moustache. <laughs> so the ending in the moustache, I really liked. And the, 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 that one really grim but kill, I don't get it, which was out of place with it. Actually, quite a tame slash. It's okay. very tame slasher fair. Acting is the normal standard in these kind of films. What? I, I do understand why it warrants a cult status because I've read a lot about people kind of quite liking the fact the, the bad, really bad, bad, bad bits and they like the really, really good, good, good bits. So I liked it overall. I do appreciate some of it's absolutely awful. So I give it, I, <laughs> I give it seven. I did like it. I already knew about it, but I really liked it. So I'm sticking with that seven. Yeah, I think a lot of people like it because of how bad it is. Yeah, and I, I dig that. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I agree that it's seven. Not... Yeah, I'm wrong. I agree that it's awful, and that's it. Yeah, it is awful. I think that, that look, like I say, I'm going to sit back. It, it's got hilarious stuff. acting in it, which I always find ace. It's endearing, isn't it? Yeah, well, like I say, I think it's the director did some weird direction. Aunt Martha and Mel are terrible acting, but yeah, I believe they probably have done better acting than other films. 
The only thing I would say is, I don't think when you look at Beefcake, uh, Ronnie, I don't think that was down to that direct. I don't think he was that bad. No, 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 he wasn't. He was probably comparable to most. I get it, seven. The the more mainstream actors were asked to ham it up beyond belief. Like I say, go, tell you what, pretend you're absolutely mental. Keep looking off to camera and do this. You you be in summer camp while there's a killer on the loose and then come back to me. Yeah. But I know that they were the good bits. They're the ones that pushed up a bit of a, a, an amount. But um, what are you it, giving it then? It's the trouble is. What are you giving it though? I'm not going to get to that. The trouble is, um, it's like I've already said. You don't get to see the kills. Yeah. At all, really. You may get to. You could say the shower one. You kind of do. So Out down the back. It, yeah, you don't really get to see the kills, and in a slashy film, that's generally what you want to watch. You're waiting for it, waiting for it, and then you don't see it, and then you probably see it about a minute or two later that something happened. That's not a fucking I... slasher film. So it's a disappointing in that particular way. Can I say something? I, in a slasher film, all I want to see is the interaction between the camera <laughs> no, and, right. the, and the cook. <laughs> um, but no, it surprised me because I thought, you know, I, I thought it was going to be very much a replica of Friday the 13th, except for the end oh. bit. Thank, and it, thankfully, it went in its own direction. Well, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, but there's like loads of stuff that we've liked that's um, not even been as gory as this, but I've kind of had a go. But the bits, the, there's other bits, like you say, where the kids are mucking about and there's pranks. It's filler. And I fucking bored out my tiny mind. That was the other bit. There was bits where in between the kills, I was going... Oh, this is shit. <laughs> that was just natural. That they just like, leave the camera rolling. Yeah, fucking Catch the kids. Yeah. Right, so yeah. you can tell kind of I'm not giving this a very high mark. It it wasn't enough for me to think Did it not save it? No, not really, because I was surprised to be honest. I thought I'd like it more. I wasn't expecting a lot. And given that I know the ending, I was thinking, oh, yeah, I, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you almost have to Try and imagine what it would be like. Well, but then again, a lot of the people who listen to this will have already seen the film. Yeah. So it's not like you're trying to hide the end. But I still think it works. I still think I liked it, even though I'd seen... I'd never watched any footage, but I'd still seen um, pictures bit, of okay. the end of her face. But I still think it worked I'd seen really the footage. well. Right. Four, I give it. Okay. But it would have got a six if I'd have never known the ending. So you're giving it a four and a six? Well, no, I'm just giving it four. Because so I knew what he did. If, but if I imagine if I'd never known the ending, which was the twist, not that she was a killer, because that's fucking obvious from the never. very start. No. But if you didn't know the ending that she had a cock and balls, that would have been, oh, that's different. You've tried something different oh, now. Oh, cock and balls. Well, because I did know that, it, it, you know, I was just waiting for it. And when I finally saw it, I just went, oh, okay. cock and balls. Okay. The cock and balls weren't as didn't yeah they weren't quite as. <laughs> but I, I can imagine if I didn't know that I, I would have got so six is pretty what? good. But no, yeah, that's I, absolutely. I couldn't fine. give it more than that really. I loved it. I I give it without the tash and Angela's face. I would have I would have given it four or five because the film wasn't great, but Angela's face was probably enough to lift it up to a yeah. seven, and that's how simple I am. Oh, that's true. And and an hour and tea, probably yeah. 10 minutes of nonsense to get to a cock and balls, uh, a big face, I think and a moustache. I think if, if, if we, I would re watch it like in a cinema with a load of other people because it would be a good laugh. Of like minded people, yeah. yeah. I think they would have, have a, a laugh at a, a hoot. Anyway, that's uh, Sleepaway Camp. It's amusing. Check it out because I think if you're in the right frame of mind, it's quite entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, I've got a low score, oh, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It, it's focus. quite entertaining. I loved it. And ch- check out the moustache. It's coming at you. What they should do is 3D, 3D version where the moustache, uh, it comes at you. Like Cleopatra. Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for listening. As always, it's much appreciated. And we'll see you soon. Ciao.